Hi everybody, it is July 25th and it has been at least a week since the last time I went into my hive. The last time I went into the main hive it was queenless and there was evidence there was a virgin queen. There are open supersedure cells and so I wanted to give them some time to get mated or figure out who's going to be queen and then get mated. And then we went on a vacation so I've been back. Now today is not the best day to be doing this inspection trying to suck my blood. It's a bit overcast. I think thunderstorms are coming, but I have to do this quickly because the next couple of days we're supposed to get some rain. So my main objective today is to see if this hive has a queen. And if it does, if I can spot her, that's one thing. Most important thing, is she laying? If not, if there's no queen, there's no evidence of a queen, then I have to requeen this hive. This hive has been queenless for too long. The numbers are diminished, as you can see, just in terms of traffic. Much fewer bees than there were even just a few weeks ago. I will also check my two other hives. I'm sorry for the wind noise. Like I said, we're supposed to get some thunder showers coming in, so I, not ideal situation. So I'm trying to do this quickly. <laughs> so right now what I've got are three hive bodies and two supers. My other plan is also to consolidate some honey in the last super and remove that for extraction. means they've stuck everything together. So as you can see, bee numbers are quite down. Uh, we are in the period of dearth right now. It's the end of July, so dearth means there are not a lot of things blooming, so not a lot of sources for nectar and honey. This looks like it's pretty much all capped, which is what is what's here. So number th one thing we're looking for are eggs, which is indication of a queen that is busy. Brood are developing things. I don't think anything's going to be happening there. Let's look down here. Okay, so it looks like most of the bees are in these one, two, three, four frames. These look like there's not a lot of activity. Give them a little puff. Have some action on it. Let's check a look. is all backfilled with syrup. Nope, don't see any activity in there. This dark pattern was originally an area of brood. That's why it has that dark coloring. This is all empty. Heavy frame of honey. Place this frame. We keep going down. <sighs> Certainly not teeming with bees, but there are bees in here. What I'm doing is creating some space here so I can take out a frame. Lifting very gently so as not to crush anyone. Oh, I do see some developing brood, which are baby bees. So in here, this is eggs, and in the central area you can see developing brood. This is terrific. This is the best course of action. They have requeened themselves successfully. Now, below I do see some queen cups, so let's check out those, make sure there's no eggs in there. See right there, right there? Make sure there's no eggs in there. Nope, no eggs. These are actually locations for swarms, swarm cups. I don't believe they'll swarm because it's not, there's no pollen, there's no uh, flow going on right now, meaning there's no nectar happening right now. They usually don't swarm unless there's a good source of nectar out there. And indeed, these are all empty. There's no egg in there. If there's an egg in there, that means they're developing a new queen and they're considering swarming. But since they just recently... Yes, that's beautiful. Great laying pattern. You can see in the centrally, this location here, there's a brood, which are baby bees. Uh, you can see the royal jelly in there, which is what they feed the developing babies. Okay, same pattern on here. In the central location you can see some hatched bees. I mean, you can see some hatched eggs and royal jelly in there. And solid laying formation. That's all I want to know. I'm going to put this back together. Leave these girls alone. Carefully slide this in here. I don't want to roll or crush anybody, particularly the queen. Very, very slowly place this back. Great. 
So now what I'm going to do is consolidate the frames here. I'm going to put all the honey into that box up there and then I'm going to separate it with an inner cover and something called a bee escape. And that will remove the bees from the top super and that way I can extract the honey from it. Great news! That is great news! I saw a solid frame of great egg laying and developing brood, which are baby bees. That means this hive has successfully requeened itself once again. Hopefully this will be the last of it, but there is a queen in there and she's laying. It's wonderful news. I'm going to take care of this hive. This hive was my original hive. In terms of numbers, it's much, much, much weaker than it used to be. I think my one of my splits, my one that has my Reba Grant queen in there, it's actually much stronger in terms of population. So I'm going to quickly go into those two and I'm going to show you the new feeders that I've been using. And uh, so far I really, really like them. And what else do I have to do? Oh, one of my other splits, the one that I used with the queen cells, I took some queen cells, a frame of queen cells from this original hive, and I put them in another hive body with a couple frames of bees. And they also successfully requeened, or the queen successfully hatched and mated, but she's not laying very well. So I've given her plenty of time at this point and I think I'm going to go ahead and replace her with a viable queen. She has been laying but not in a very good pattern. And Michael Palmer said in a talk that he had with our club that don't save the dinks. If you have a dinky hive, replace the queen and just keep on moving. Of course he's a commercial beekeeper but that seems like pretty good policy in the sense of just natural selection. Alright, so let's take a quick peek into those other two hives. So as you can see, just quickly on the bottom board here, there is a lot more activity than the first hive, which was the original hive. Uh, it is pretty humid today, so the bees are bearding a bit to cool down, fanning. Three hive bodies to create a three box brood chamber, which is where we want the eggs and brood to be. This top box is actually empty. It is holding the Feeder. So right now we're in the middle of dearth. It's July 25th, so there are not a lot of things blooming right now. So I'm feeding them to encourage to build out comb or draw out comb and sugar water does that. So there's some sugar water here. Now let me show you the feeders I was talking about. I have a brick weighing down the telescoping cover. I'm going to get a ratchet for this one as well at some point. So this is my sugar water. This is one to one sugar water, so half sugar half water and I sometimes add honeybee healthy is this additive it's very aromatic it's got some essential oils in there I believe wintergreen and lemongrass I also like to add a splash of apple cider vinegar as well so I've read that inverting the sugar a bit helps with the bees health before in this hive I had a frame feeder which took up the space of two frames and I didn't like it for a couple reasons. Number one, it took up space in the chamber. Number two, there was drowning. It was really difficult to see, but down below, there were two ladders that allowed the bees to go down into the syrup, and oftentimes they drowned. And it was also very difficult to see how full it was. Now this feeder works differently. So there's a lid, and here are the bees, and a lot of ants. So, see those, that's, those are all ants. So that's a problem. I'll probably have to put some cinnamon or something down. But as you can see, the water, the syrup level is very low. It's empty. They need to be refilled. So this is what I like about this feeder. I, in the event that I am traveling and I need someone to help me feed the bees, they can open this up without being exposed to the bees. The, bo the bees are inside this cup. And inside here, the inner surface of the cup is ribbed. So the bees can crawl up and down and drink the syrup water that comes up from underneath that cup and then they go down into the hive. That hole goes all the way down to the hive. But when you open the hive, you're not exposed to any of the bees, so I don't have to worry about someone accidentally getting stung. This capacity holds about one gallon, and I've been doing about a half gallon. When we were traveled, we went on vacation for about four days. I could fill up a gallon, and it kept them fed for four days. So that is good. I will continue to keep feeding them until the fall flow starts, and then I will stop. And the only reason why I'm feeding them, I'm not feeding my main hive, or the original hive, because they have plenty of syrup stores, or honey stores, I should say, nectar stores. This hive, just because it's recently established, does not have any of those stores, and they do not have drawn out comb. So that's why I'm giving them sugar water. Same with this split right here. So this is the one gallon 
size. I bought this from Be Built. I'll put their link down below. And so far I like it. You can see that there has been very minimal drowning, which I like. The other hive top feeders that I've had experience with, there's always been drowning, sometimes large amounts of drowning. And this, as you can see, there's been no drowning. The bees can just drink and then climb back into the hive. I like this feeder a lot. So let me show you how to refill this. You just add the syrup, just like this, to the outside. and it flows underneath this cup and the bees can drink from it. So this is really nice. You can observe your bees without wearing a veil. You can see what they're doing. You get a little peek on them and uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about getting stung. And let me show you the smaller version. So this is the split that I did with a frame of queen cells. This is in a makeshift nucleus colony, but I will be putting this into a new hive shortly. So I just used this plastic lid and a piece of foam because I didn't have enough equipment, but it seemed to work fine. So here's the smaller version. This is about half the capacity. It's a round size. And this too has a cup. And as you can see, here's the syrup. This brown stuff are tiny little ants. But again, no exposure to these whatsoever. And no or very little drowning. I don't see any drowned bees at the bottom there. The method I was using before I used these feeders was a jar, a mason jar, and I poked some tiny holes, just a few of them in the lid, and upturned it over the hole in the inner cover, and that seems to work fine. The only problem is the capacity. It only holds enough syrup for maybe a day or two, and so if you have to leave and you have no one to tend your bees, then that becomes an issue. Also for fall feeding, you want to have large capacity because you want the bees to fill up stores as quickly as possible, so yeah. That's it. So, so far, I like these feeders a lot. Alrighty, so that's it for July 25th. My main original hive is Queenware, and I am so happy. Alright, see you next time. Bye!